Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Weekly Infrastructure SIG meeting. Today we are the third day of September 2024 and around the virtual table we have myself, Damien Duportal, uh, Hervé Lemeur and Mark White are not there, Bruno neither, and we have Kevin Martins and Jeremy along with Stefan and I. Let's get started with the announcement. Uh, last week, the weekly release 2.474 succeeded no package job issue and the rest was smooth. Uh, thanks everyone. Um, this week, we will delay the weekly release of one day. So it will be published tomorrow. I'm not sure because I think I forgot to ping you yesterday, uh, Kevin. So now I'm sharing the information with you about the change log. I'm sorry, uh, I will have to think about you next time. Um, uh, it was late me. My, I don't have any apologies for that, so I'm sorry. Um, no worries. So we delayed because Basil uh, has one last pull request in the context of the new Spring Security 6 uh, project. Um, it's, uh, it could be released today, but there is an additional pull request you will want to be merged. The reason is because we will have an LTS line selection soon in 10 days. And in the case of the LTS selection, we'll pick to two days weekly without this pull request. That could be annoying and could stick for a lot of LTSs for at least a full branch. So we had the discussion and Daniel requested a bit more time to be sure we can embed that version. Hence the, ha the request for delay, Tim Yacom uh, is okay as the SIG release lead. So he disabled the weekly release for today. And I've, as infrastructure person, I just mentioned, be careful, we have an LTS release tomorrow. So we just just be, have to be careful on sequ uh, sequentializing, not doing both at the same time. Parallel should work as uh, the last Security advisory demonstrated with Daniel, we released multiple versions at the same time, but it's easier to have one and then the other. So as such, tomorrow morning in European time, uh, night US time, and uh, af beginning of, no, end of morning eventually for Indian time. But tomorrow we'll have first the LTS, uh, 7 a.m. UTC plus two, so at uh, 5 a.m. Uh, UTC. Uh, oh, it will be. It would still be morning uh, in India. Uh, Alex will start the LTS, and the weekly is expected to start after that, most probably manually. That's all I have for the weekly releases. Are there any questions? Need for clarification? Something else to add? I have nothing on the weekly. Just to tell you that uh, this meeting event in the calendar have been deleted that's why people are not coming because they thought that was cancelled and i'm checking and and the event is uh crossed mm. i don't see deleted is it the same for you folks it's red with um barry um uh it's present for me yeah okay it's not straight through which account? Uh, which account are I'm you? I'm talking using? about the about the Jenkins infrastructure team sync on, yep. on the calendar of the yep. uh, Jenkins. Because it's written, you haven't answered it for stefan.merl plus Jenkins at gmail.com. It's written yeah. that you you did not respond to it, so that's why it's marked as deleted, I believe. Okay, we you, will have to check might... with Bruno because he got exactly the same uh, pattern, and he thought that he he said that the meeting have disappeared from the calendar. Hmm, so we, we will okay. have to check on that event. Yep. Yeah, there might be something wrong. You're right. Okay, we will check. No problem. Thanks. Uh, good point. Oh, welcome. Um, another announcement. So let me add it. Looks like some of us have issues with the infra SIG Google Agenda event. Need to check. 
Google App Vision Da, okay. Good Damien. And tomorrow, as a reminder, we'll have an LTS and then the weekly. But that will be releases. Hello Bruno. So we'll have a look uh, with uh, both you, Bruno and Stefan about this. Do you have other announcement, folks? Oh, okay. So let's have a quick look at the upcoming calendar. Uh, next weekly will happen in uh, next week, the 10th September, same day as our uh, infra SIG meeting. That weekly is expected to be 2.476. Uh, so the next LTS is tomorrow, 2.462.2. Uh, Alex Brandes is released lead and should start early. And the next baseline selection, which is the reason why we delayed the weekly, is um, 18 September 2024. We don't have any announced uh, Jenkins Security Advisory. And in the upcoming three weeks, we have four credentials that will expire that will need to rotate. One expire 19 September and the further 22. All of them are related to um, uh, to Azure file shares. Uh, it's a choice having to renew every three months. We could use identities. Uh, we can always discuss. I will request from Hervé to work on the stats Jenkins IO since it's closely related to delivering the new new.stat.jenkins IO for the, the GSOC project that has been finished. Uh, if you don't have time, then we will take care of it uh, the day before. And for the free others, Stefan, we will have to change them. I, if it's possible, I would want to have you working on the update then Kinsayo one since we have the update center brownouts to uh, to prepare. I don't mind yeah. helping you, but yeah, this one should be okay. And I don't mind taking care of the contributors one. Is that okay for you? It's perfect. Cool. So I will need I will take care of creating the issues and assign them to you. Hi, uh, etc. Um, next major event, we have the DevOps World Virtual Online, uh, September 17, and the City Mini Summit, September 19. The first one is remote, so anyone can attend. Don't stay to spend time with us. Uh, oh, I will have to record my, the presentation tomorrow, uh, by the way. And Bruno, you are presenting. Congratulations. Uh, mm -hmm. say hello to Olivier in Vienna. I hope you will have a nice trip and, have a and a good <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, sure. And before that, sorry for not modifying the document earlier today. There is also the um, t um, Adoption Summit uh, happening on September the 10th. Um, I will give a talk also regarding the relationship between Jenkins and Timurin. And it's also online. It's not even a hybrid event, so anyone could attend. Online. Okay, good catch. Thanks. Thank you. Let me add it on top. Oh. Online. And you say the CD Summit is hybrid? No, no, it's not hybrid. I uh, would oh. have loved to, but no. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> On site. Yeah. Thank you. I've never been to Vienna, but I, I believe it's a nice place. Me neither. I will let you know if I ever survive. <laughs> <laughs> and if you learn how to dance. Oh, uh, okay. I thought it was just about drinking coffee with a chocolate <laughs> topping or things like that. But okay, we'll see. Anything else, folks, on announcement or upcoming calendars? Okay. So let's have a quick look at the cloud budget. So we are the uh, that's the first iteration. So we could uh, we know already how much did we spend on the previous month. Let's start with the CDF as your account. So we were we are at four point five. We are still under our area. Uh, that's really good. Uh, we had four point four costs and um, hundred of monthly support. And right now we have consumed 266. So that's a forecast at 3.5. Hey, why is such a decrease? Uh, even if it's not reliable after only three days of the month, 
we have moved the Redis instances uh, to the sponsorship account where we have credits. So of course, immediate benefits, we remove 300 bucks at least per month. So that's why uh, or the forecast is so low. We should expect something at 4.1K uh, uh, at the end of September. We also have two other issues uh, that could have a, a positive impact on the bill. The first one is uh, moving mirror. Uh, so mirror bits is now in RM64. So LDAP to RM64. We have an issue about, uh, about this. We only have one virtual machine on the cl uh, public cluster running on Intel. And the second one is uh, migrating the private cluster to the sponsored account for a few months. We will this one has an issue, but we I want to delay it until middle of September, until we are sure that the first brownout of Update Center are okay, because I want uh, Stefan fully focused with uh, me on the Update Center topic. Stefan, most probably I will push you to do this with Jay, to lead this and have oh, Jay cool. help you. The goal will be to create a new cluster on the sponsored accounts that will be used for hosting infra CI and release CI, so the private gates, but with the new network setup that uh, you and I applied on the infra and CI Jenkins agent clusters, private control plane, uh, new CNI drivers, and all the Azure recommendations on the uh, system pool. Okay. Uh, end of September, uh, most probably. Uh, about the other sponsorship, so we consume 10.5k next week, uh, next uh, previous month. So that's due to all the builds on CI Jenkins IO for the spring security program. And right now we have already consumed 800 credits. Uh, so we have a forecast that 8k most probably will hit 9k. More on this next week. That's good. We are under the we are on the expected consumption. Uh, we have. 56,000 credits remaining uh, until May 2025. Digital Ocean, we consumed 200 uh, bucks, so that was expected. We had a slight cost increase compared to the pre two previous months due to bandwidth increase. And right now we have consumed 11, so forecast at 120, we are under the line, and we have uh, 15,000 credits to be used on Digital Ocean. Finally, AWS, the CloudBees account, we have consumed 6.3K last month, so a bit less than uh, July. And we have the same forecast uh, with the current consumption today. This will disappear as soon as we will have migrated uh, uh, updates, the update center. We have less than 500 uh, of virtual machine and the rest is bandwidth. And of course, we still have 60K sleeping on an AWS account uh, valid until end of January 2025. Do you have any question about cloud budgets? Um, the portal. So I, to open an issue describing the cloud billing plans for the upcoming four months. The idea is that we have four months until two of our credit uh, reserve expires. The whole idea I have is that we should migrate CI Jenkins IO to AWS. So CI Jenkins IO should start using these credits. CI Jenkins IO is a single entity that we can move on different locations quite easily. That a few days of work for us, of course, but that will ensure that the sponsorship credits here that are valid until May, we can have long running services. We moved the Redis last week. We have the private cluster. We have the infra CI cluster. We have some agent for trusted answer. These are things we that are not as easy to move as CI Jenkins IO, because CI is a single entity. So the idea is that 
we want with the current rate at 10k this credit will expire in january at the same time as aws and digital ocean so if we can make sure we have this credit reserve even if we still have cdf that will avoid having to roll back all the changes we made between the two azure accounts also that means aws while we get away from CloudBees, if we consume these credits, we should be able to ask them for more credits. The, the balance is let's try to consume on both AWS and Azure. Finally, for DigitalOcean, they should renew, but they might want to decrease since we haven't consumed that much and it's visible. So the problem is if we move any of our controller to DigitalOcean, we need to have a lot of work on implementing the digital ocean agent plugin we can spin up virtual uh, ephemeral agent in the form of digital ocean virtual machines stefan and Hervé started proof of concept with this we know it works but the effort to integrate this on packer image and the controller uh, could take enough of our time so my proposal is that we use digital ocean for the cloud based leftover machine. So we have update center that remove one service. We still have we still have three machines with three services, package, uh, census, and usage. We move these machines on digital ocean, so we continue using credits, even if it's not a big rate. So we expect they renew while decreasing. That's okay to sustain these machines and archive Jenkins IO, which is already there. So we keep a low usage, but that just work because these are virtual machines. We start using AWS with CI Jenkins IO, hoping for them to renew the credits and we continue having 6K with the consumption is six months. So if they renew of 6K, that's that send us to next summer. While we keep the balance between the two Azure accounts. So that's the whole idea. Um, I've just planted a seed by singing aloud. Now I need to write this down. I believe an issue with graph will help to understand. The goal yeah. is that we have to agree or disagree for next meeting so we can start working on these changes and prioritize them. In fact, the main problem is that three of them are ending at the beginning of January. Exactly, and we don't know which one uh, will be uh, we'll, we will have to move. And we don't know at what time they will, if they renew, when are they telling us? No, that's quite the unknown. Usually Digital Ocean, we ask in beginning of December. Uh, for AWS, I don't know, Mark uh, took care of the, these credits. Uh, they should have answer during the summer. So I believe we will have an answer in September. Okay. So yeah, the whole idea here is trying to uh, to spread everything. The work we will put on moving CI Jenkins IO away from Azure to uh, AWS, we know it works, we already did it, uh, that we know the steps and that will help us to clean up and make it simpler. If we do it often, we did it uh, eight months ago, so uh, that should be easy and we can go back quite quickly if it's fresh in our memory. That's all for me. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Oh, I absolutely messed up. Okay, you oh, didn't no, I've, passed? I, I did, but I copy and pasted on something I deleted. Just let me <laughs> get it again. Oh, crap, Damien. I'm sorry. Uh, I just saw it. I would have done it. No problem. I, I, I forgot. So it was... Uh, okay, let... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I missed, I took it, I did it. Crap, Damien, really bad, bad Damien. So we did nothing and we are doing nothing. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm trying to make jokes until the things is generated. Okay, a few seconds and here we are. We can ask Bruno to sing a little or to practice dancing for Vienna. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> No way. La, la, la. Okay, so what were we able to do during the past milestone? Um, 
We help a user, so ACP mirroring configuration prevent usage of external repository. We have a plugin maintainer. Uh, they have a Maven dependency they own, and that is required by their plugin. But that dependency uh, wasn't on the Maven central repository, neither on the Jenkins repository. Recently, they had changes and they had to update and all of their build are, is broken. So I gave them a solution to temporarily disable ACP or embed their dependency directly on GitHub. You can tell Maven, hey, here is the file repository. Here's the path and that works out of the box. They chose, since it should be quick, to start the process of uploading and releasing on Maven Central. So they had to do the initial release, which takes time, and then it's OK, because there is a quarantine part that has been fixed. And disabling ACP with the nice documentation written by Hervé was enough for them. So they were able to update the plugin, update the dependency, and start again using ACP. They thanked us and confirmed it was working for them. Any question? So that was support level one, and they were happy with the outcome. We had two users blocked by uh, uh, the work of Mark, so thanks. They were doing issue spam on Jira. Stefan, uh, you worked on the CRL expiration of the private VPN. Can you tell us a bit more about this issue? No, there's not much to say. It's just a renewal. We got a, a nice uh, runbook to, to follow. Um, but I worked on a way to have an issue open automatically when we are close to expiration as as a reminder, just not to have to deal with agenda and to forget. Um, the pull request is still open, I think. I'm, I'm finishing mm -hmm. right now. Um, maybe we will have to, to find ways to automate completely the the process of uh, of uh, renewing but uh, but for now the first step is just uh, opening an issue as a reminder to exactly post the yeah. I, I didn't uh, couldn't, sure. say it much but the detail but yes that made the azure boot so thanks. It's Thank twice you. a year. So the only not thing good. is not forgetting. So creating automatically the issue is uh, good enough for now. It's not worth the effort for the long term, but still worth uh, mentioning it. Yes. So we have uh, fixed the Redis challenges we had. So instead of two Redis services that the CDF pays for, we now, we now are using credits on a premium high quality instance, which hosts both Get Jenkins IO and the new update center. Uh, we don't have any more performance issues on Get Jenkins IO due to Redis because Redis was uh, absolutely full. So now we pay less. The instance is private and not publicly exposed. Uh, and everything works. So good job. Thanks, Stefan, for the help on this one. That has good been job quite... for the migration because that was a nice work in the weekend. Yeah, though the learning here is when we migrate, we shouldn't migrate the Redis data. It's only cached data. Because what happened is that Redis is not uh, able to properly reuse the same cache keys, which shows we don't need persistence for Redis in memory is OK. And next time, we will only have to rely on the fallback. So we will create a new empty database like we did for uh, the new update center. And we will migrate mirror bits and add back the mirrors. That's just a few minutes, and the fallback serves request until the mirrors are added. Okay, so the first the first uh, thing we thought was the good one. Yes. Good. Okay. Listen, migrating Redis data for mirror bits is useless and slow. It took eight hours to move the keys and things. So it's slow. I found a way afterwards to uh, shrink it to 40 minutes, which is way faster. But even in 40 minutes, that's uh, eight run of the update center. 
which means you have eight potential new sets of plugins released. So you are way left behind. And what I see is that um, on mirror bits, we have duplicated keys on the mirrors. If you look at the mirror list for the latest uh, LTS score, you see twice Yandex, twice Ostico, twice FTP OS USL on New York. That's because there are issues. And so the lesson for us is next time we will need to migrate through this, let's do it quickly. And we announce we will have uh, lower performances because we use fallback. So the fallback is hit by all the production workload until mirrors are scanned again. That's we, we, five we to will, 10 minutes. We will have uh, um, um, more more to pay for the for the bandwidth for the for the fallback. That's all. Yeah, exactly. If we pay the bandwidth of the fallback depending uh, on which one we, is. Uh, yeah, in the exactly. Orbit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Next time, we'll rely on fallbacks for migration. Okay, so that one was a big one for a data center and took uh, most of our time. Uh, we had a closed issue. So a reminder, do not use the dynamic update center URL. Use the documentation on updates Jenkins IO, which states, hey, here, let's, it's on the home page. And so if you look at the version specific update site section, it say, hey, get the usual URL, add a query string with version parameters set to the Jenkins version we need, follow the redirection and get the content, that's all. You can absolutely abstract away the redirection chains because we have implementation details and sometimes the versions on the dynamic update center is different than the version requested by the user. The content served by the server is good for you. Don't worry about this chain of redirect. Follow them and get the content, okay? More details on the issue confirmed by Daniel and Tim. It's the way update center work. So we closed was not planned because we gave the explanation to the end user and they should follow this uh, instruction. Dynamic update center are considered deprecated since five years. Anything else on the closed issue, finished issues? Nope, okay. So now work in progress. Um, so I'm taking them on the order right now. Uh, we'll reorder priority uh, uh, in the blah, 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 in the uh, new milestone. First of all, postpone the weekly release. So it's just a placeholder now that uh, we have disabled that will be closed automatically tomorrow after the successful release. I have no doubt it will be successful. Uh, we have an issue that is closable. Uh, Jay, you will have to confirm that you have access to infra CI on the issue so, and close it if it's okay for you. Yeah, sure. I believe you have access to infra CI now. Yes, I do. Um, update the portal to open an issue for improving infra.ci matrix permission. Uh, because Jay is authenticated and has access to all jobs. That's, uh, I forgot about it, but we want to shrink uh, default permissions and then extend them. So Jay, be prepared to have your permission be restricted to a Nipacker image soon. And we will remove the default authenticated user permission. So you can only access Jenkins, but not see the jobs by default, unless you are an admin. I wonder if we don't already have an issue about this. I will search for it if it's the case. Any question? Next one, so Hervé is not there, but uh, he said he will be able to prepare a plan about existing stats Jenkins IO. Uh, so um, that's as a reminder, that is a GSOC project that just ended that we will put in production. Uh, that looks really good. And the goal is to replace 
the new uh, the stats Jenkins IO website by new stats Jenkins IO to prepare a plan for production. Um, don't forget about credential for file storage. We mentioned it earlier. Don't forget about blue green uh, fallback scenario. So that means if we have an issue, what are the indicators? Um, scenario, what are the indicators to follow up in order to go back if needed? And how much time do we consider before saying, okay, we can archive and deprovision the old service? That's part of the plan that Arish will come with. Uh, we will let him know uh, if it's working for him. I propose we said uh, TTL, uh, we are 10. TTL for the plan, 7 September. That's let's the uh, Hervé two weeks. If we don't have any news in the upcoming two weeks, then we will take the matter in our hands. Is that okay for everyone? Raise your hand if you do not agree. Okay, if you disagree and don't want to tell him me publicly, don't hesitate to send me a private message and we will extend the TTL if needed. Gradle plugin use a proprietary dependency. It, no action expected from us, it's just a placeholder. Uh, Gradle, uh, with the help uh, of Oleg uh, Nenashev, who are former Jenkins contributor and working for Gradle uh, the DevEx, uh, are working on uh, finding a solution so they are trying, they have been informed, they acknowledge, they had the information and Daniel is following this uh, closely. So no action required from us, except we know that we are delivering a plugin that might have uh, license issues. We did the, the best things that was unexpected and are trying to fix it. Uh, GSAC project about the plugin modernizer tool. So we had started the discussion on the issue. Um, so for sure, the code for the application need to be migrated to Jenkins Infra as per the discussion. That's the first steps uh, on their own. So I think it's more directed to you, Bruno. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> then we will have to work on uh, how do we want to release uh, the binary until today cd was used so the cd.yaml workflow on jenkins ci github actions is the, the way we deploy new plugin binaries to the artifactory system okay mm -hmm. so once that i don't know if we need to keep it i will vote for keeping it but i'm not sure if it work out of the box on jenkins infra um, so you, uh, they will have to think about the distribute the way we distribute the binary generated by that project. G releaser, as provided by uh, by your contributor, looks it's okay. It's able to generate and publish on Homebrew packages. Homebrew is a package manager initially built for macOS, but that also work on Windows and uh, Linux. Uh, so they will have to think about how to deploy it. We have an Homebrew tap system uh, already used by John Mark Mason from a binary and some of the Jenkins infra binaries. So we only did it with Go Releaser because these were Golang tools. Now it's a new one, it's the Java command line tool, but I have no doubt we can deliver it. Uh, so there will be work on their own in order to, to move to this new publication system. But that's okay for the infra. And finally, there were another uh, part related to data. That tool is used to generate data. So they will have to ex to set up or to define um, how does it work because that data is generated manually as far as I understand now. More or less. Uh, <laughs> in fact, there is a GitHub action that creates new data okay. every week, if ever that's needed. Okay. You know, sometimes it just doesn't produce any new data. But uh, there's also another part, which is for the time being done by hand. Uh, so the goal would be to have everything automated and then maybe stored somewhere in the Jenkins Infra uh, organization. Okay, so that means that that is a generation process that should move to Infra CI. Mm -hmm. 
And because, uh, as discussed, the need is to uh, produce data, and we always want to expose the latest version of the data. So mm -hmm. the, the service we have is Report Jenkins IO. And we have a pipeline library uh, that you can call on a pipeline running on Infra CI that, okay, let's generate the data, eventually do some ILS check on the local data, and call the pipeline library function that will upload this to uh, Report Jenkins IO. I believe that should be enough instead of storing it historically on a GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. However, if we need to have an history of all the data change every week, then a GitHub repository is way is way better for this. Uh, I'm not so sure. It has to be discussed, but I'm not so sure we have to store the history of the thing. What's interesting and in how... <laughs> how it evolves, but we don't care that much about the, the legacy or the history. Mm -hmm. We want to see things progressing, but I'm not so sure we are proud of, you know, uh, outdated plugins and things like that. So storing the history, I'm not so sure. So maybe and just the latest data is okay. Don't, don't forget the Unix rule. The tool generator reports. So the tool should not have to care about the history. If you want yeah, history, usually you want a second you tool that it. aggregates the data and build mm -hmm. the tendencies or the metrics out of it. Usually that's the pattern. Otherwise you end up with a big clogged tool that try to do everything and does and does everything badly. <laughs> so I my understanding of the code I've read is that yeah, that's a report tool generator, so that should move. So the first step will be first let's move this to Jenkins Infra, the repository. Then okay. let's start a pull request to have it on Infra CI and with the publication available. And then we will go on, okay, let's publish the, the command line. That also need, we will need two Jenkins files, one for the data report and one for yeah. building the application. These are mm -hmm. two different processes. Got it, thank you. So we continue working on this one. Um, needs to migrate repo and workflows to Jenkins Infra, Infra CI with reports geo. Uh, there is another project uh, that need to be migrated as far as I can tell to Jenkins Infra. Can you, uh, can you, the day, the day you do the migration, can you uh, show me how you manage that? Migrating repository right. yes, within Jenkins Infra. Yes. Oh, that's two different things. We will do, need to do both, but that's two different things. First, we move the repository in the proper GitHub organization, and then we will need to add the jobs on Infra CI through our M chart. Yeah, that's that's two step. But just the the GitHub migration, I have no clue how okay. you change from yep. ownership. Yep, no problem. Uh, so I, I see we have uh, acknowledging. So for this one, uh, Bruno, I think, uh, I don't know if it's you or Chris, you have to contact uh, the GSOC uh, mentee so they can move the the repository to Jenkins Infra. You're muted. Okay. You're muted. Yeah, yeah, of course, chilling me. Uh, Chris and I will do so. We'll contact Noor and see how okay. we can do that. Thank you. So this one just require um, uh, one repository migration. So if yeah. we miss, Stefan, if we miss the first one, we can always work on this one. Okay. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure it's that... silly, but... And then, Sorry, uh... go ahead. Just so that you know, uh, it's a repo, but inside there is a tool. And when it started, the tool downloads something outside of the Jenkins organization. Is that okay with you? So right now the request is about migrating the source code. Yeah. Nothing else. Okay. So that is that fine with you? That's fine with me. If the code is expected to generate something, publish it, use it, then it has to be specified and explained here. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not the case. In fact, it it's source code. And once it's built and run, then it downloads something from the internet. <laughs> but um uh, it's not hosted on the Jenkins Infra, so that should be okay. Uh, yeah, it's just hosting code right now. Yeah, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, so 
if the thing is uh, maybe it's worth adding a note here explaining mm -hmm. we will use data from be warned okay uh remind me about this next week uh, or this when we will have migrated the repository just as a note in the readme that's okay because the question is what will we do with that project what will be the next step okay the next step sunday will be to host it somewhere on the infra so the question will have to be asked at that time yeah no first before hosting in infra specify <laughs> the expectation and the goal and the value and the delivery and etc and then we decide yes. if the infra is still the location <laughs> okay yeah yeah that's what i meant <laughs> okay perfect yeah but just want to be sure don't don't we don't want to come with a solution to a problem that is not defined mm. and the problem is not defined here or at least i no. don't see anything here it's not there yet Okay, perfect. Uh, right now, the only problem defined here is we want to host code. So yep, that code okay. is not expected to be consumed directly by Jenkins users and mm. the Jenkins infra location. Okay for you? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, we have the RPU GSOC project with Terraform integration. So um, need planning in inside the infra team i forgot about this one so we have to create a set of azure resources in order to prepare a terraform project for them to run with our usual libraries uh, but they need we need to create the resources and on on public that's the first time these resources are usually private and then we need to set up the job on infra ci and then let them start with our libraries that's not a lot, but that's something we need to extract out from the private repository inside our public repo. Uh, they need a Terraform project and Terraform as we, what we call a, a state. It's a kind of file-based database. But the state should not be a file. Otherwise, how do you lock and ensure that you don't have two person changing the state in concurrency? So you need either to be a HashiCorp customer, free or paid, or to have a Terraform connector that were that tell Terraform to host its state on a remote system such as Amazon S3 or Azure Blob Storage, where they have locks. So if someone try to run a Terraform command that require uh, to changing the state, then Terraform will get a lock on the remote cloud system finish its operation before releasing the lock and letting the other operation to perform or fail. And this remote thing where you have the lock and share the state are Azure Blob Storage resources. So we need to create them. We know how to do this because we already do this for six other Terraform projects, but we need to have the definition of these resources to be public instead of private. That's the big change. Hence the need planning. I want to have a list and to cover everything with Stefan so Stefan can work on this. And prioritization. Any question on this uh, third one? No emergency on this one as far as I understand. Uh, work in progress around MaxMind GeoIP. Stefan, can you give us a summary of this one? In fact, you did most of, uh, of the first part, meaning that uh, to handle the, the rate limit, you tried to share the database of GeoEP between the, the two pods that we're using. In fact, the four pods, but two by two pods of uh, mirror bits for them to have a, a shared uh, data storage to uh, handle the database of GeoEP. Um, the problem right now is that the, the, the access must be read-only for both pod not to update both of them at the same time and crash the, the, the shared, the SMB uh, shared the file share storage, file storage. So uh, we are uh, planning to try with a, a Kubernetes um, cron function, cron forgot the exact name, um, to be able to update that database. I just starting around that. 
So yes, we will probably need a custom Docker image and that uh, Kubernetes front function to be able to uh, manually, not manually, automatically every uh, forgot uh, or every week, I think, an update of the database. Mm -hmm. Need geo IP update, CLI, and also AZ copy, CLI. Is that okay? Not yet quite in my brain, but that will. I need to spend more time okay. on that. I gave you the three main informations here. Yeah, I see. Good. Any question? I, I nope. will have tons of them on that, but not today. Okay. Um, GH API rate limits. So we are still having the issue. So fixed the um, job DSL white space issues which were breaking in FRACI following latest at the portal changes. So I did some changes uh, cleaning up required for the next steps. And by doing so, I broke in FRACI in an unexpected way that the unit tests weren't able to show. Lucky us, the manual and to end tests were able to help me reproduce the issue. I understand it. It was YAML. Uh, yes, multi-line YAML, where when you have spaces before uh, empty lines, that can have consequences. Anyway, it's fixed. So we on the uh, job DSL organization uh, folder implementation. So I'm close to something working that should decrease. Uh, next step, pipeline shared library. That will be a long running issue because it will take time uh, as a side task. Changes for the way we publish Docker. Uh, Docker images. So that's the status. Uh, that's not the top priority things. I will do a bit of work every week. To, so I expect we won't have anything until end of the September on this one. Any question? So stats, Jenkins, IO top level issue. Let me add it when we mention Hervé. Uh, link, uh, last mile of Okay, so that's the parent epic issue. Uh, Jay, your turn. GDK21 agent, can you give us the status? Yeah, so the um, early clusters, the JDK agents has not been built for his uh, trusted CI and sort CI. And right now the issue or the blocker was there was a default a JDK version that was being set up by the init script for Windows agents, uh, for which I provided a fix for. And we're testing the fix right now. So if the fix, so if the fix works, we can proceed to end the session. And being implemented in Tracker image templates. Okay, something else to add? Any question, clarification? One, two, three, no, no. okay, thanks. Thanks, Jay. Uh, one last work in progress, migrate update Jenkins IO to another cloud. So, uh, Redis migration done, ready to production. So the Redis operation, as underlined by Stefan one week ago, uh, was mandatory before planning any uh, brownout because we want to have a Redis instance with the proper shape and not publicly exposed. That has been done. So now we have to plan brownout. So initially it should have been done fr last Friday. I proposed this Thursday. I proposed the following plan and I will open the blog post later today. One hour this Thursday, 
uh, we will be 5 September. Good morning in you. Um, after the LTS weekly releases, so we will have a bit of traffic due to early early European uh, Jenkins user and uh, Jenkins user in Azure. They will use the new update center mainly. And I want to do the same um, Monday. No, uh, Stefan, I don't remember. Yes, we said we said Monday, right? This Monday. Sorry, I was mute. Saying? Yes, you said Monday. After uh, morning in US. So the goal yeah. is to cover US. And then we will uh, we'll, uh, uh, discuss and do a post-mortem on the next team meeting and we'll discuss about a full day brownout. Uh, thanks, Stefan, for reminding me. We have to check before brownout how to detect errors. That will be on Datadog because we collect logs and metrics from these services. So either a quick dashboard or at least write a, a comment explaining how to check for errors during the brownouts. Uh, I think that's a really sane behavior here. So we can detect if the new system performs badly. Okay? Looks good for everyone? Yes, perfect. In parallel, but lower priority, um, Mirror bits use mirror bit CLI on trusted CI instead of kubectl. The goal is to avoid having to reach the Kubernetes API control plane and spin up container, uh, spin up a, a shell con shell process in the container to trigger a mirror list scan. Mirror bits allow to have a gRPC client binary. So that's way easier and we are working on this part, which is also an excuse, excuse to validate use of Azure private link services for Kubernetes internal LBs. So right now we have cluster using private ingress. Example, in FRACI, you need a VPN to reach the private ingress. That's an internal load balancer not exposed publicly. Problem is that from the VPN, you need VNet peering to almost all the virtual network. And we have now 11 virtual network on two subscription that start to be quite a mess with risks of accidentally opening communication in one side or the other. By using Azure Private Link Service, you define an internal private service, and then you can create a collection of private endpoints that can reach the service even if the virtual network are not linked to each other. That's the pattern we have used for Redis with success, and that's why I wanted Stefan to start with this one. Now we use the same pattern for a Kubernetes internal service that we manage. We've used PLS system for the new Docker registry and for the Redis registry. Both are managed services by Azure. Now we are working on let's do the same, but we define the PLS for one of our own services. If it works, then we will be able to, uh, to remove most of the VNet peering we have, and we will switch to using PLS for the internal services to allow cross network communication but in an explicit way. And in any case, it's needed for a data center to increase the security on trusted CI because we will not require any more access to, a, to the cluster, to a service account, to manage a certificate, etc. Any question, objection, need for clarification for this last important one? Okay, so now let's just have a quick look at the triage issue. And I also have one more task for Jay. So let's have a look at the triage issue. We have someone not able to create an account. I missed it. 
อ่า account issue uh, we have a plugin maintainer run OIC they use code.gov and it stopped working so also support issue let me add it to the notes uh, code.gov THS support question for plugin maintainer. Okay. Do you see other new issue? We don't have new issue, lucky us. Uh, finally, so I will need uh, to write an issue for J. Uh, so basically, Stefan and Bruno, you will you might be interested. Uh, Kevin, you could be, but I don't think that will be really useful for you. So uh, we started uh, update CLI early for the Kubernetes management in order to detect when we have new Elm chart versions and propose pull requests to bump these versions, same as depend about or renov about. Um, we used to have all full regex to manage this. For instance, here you can see we want to update a file which is a YAML file using a match pattern. Recently, I was able to fix the artifact caching proxy to use the native YAML with the YAML path, and we emit a query to locate the object because we have a file. Awesome. That the idea is the following. These files hosts a collection of releases, as you can see here. And here we have a, a, an array. So that's the index zero object. Then second caret index one, index two, etc. If we do a YAML query with the numerical index, that will break as soon as we will sort or change the order. That's a problem. That's why we used to have the regex, because the regex, the regex were trying the name and then the version. But you know the adage, you have one problem, you write a regex, you have four problems. So <laughs> uh, the mission for you, Jay, will be to update all these update CLI manifests to use the new YAML native thing, uh, same as artifact caching proxy native model. So I need to write an issue to explain the reasons, uh, but you can start uh, while you're waiting for the one hour builds on Packer images, you can start playing around. So I recommend you to select, to first run the artifact caching proxy update CLI diff command on this one. Then once you are you have worked with production on your machine, then try to edit Akuntap or any of the others. Okay. You you did improve update CLI for that, or, or that was in there and we didn't use it? Uh, it was there since at least one year. Um, ah. Yes. But that was a matter of uh, finding the proper uh, query. Yeah, that's really cool. I have other improvements that are that have been done last week on update CLI though, but I will speak about them later. Let's start with this one. Cool. Are you up to the challenge, Jay? Yep. Yeah. Let okay. me give it a shot. Okay. Uh, that's all for me. Do you have something else to add, or are you okay for for closing the meeting? Nope. Okay. So I'm gonna stop okay. the screen share. Stop the recording for people watching us. See you next week. Bye-bye.